Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It is Crime Must Day 22 and today we will be talking about the murder of the Queen of Tejano Music, Selena. Selena Quintanilla was born on April 16th, 1971 in Lake Jackson, Texas. She was the youngest of Marcella and Abraham's three kids and had an older sister named Suzette and an older brother named Abraham III, or A.B. Growing up, Selena and her siblings were extremely passionate about music. These kids loved to perform, and this for them came naturally as their father, Abraham, was also a musician. They opened up a family Tex-Mex restaurant, and they would perform there as a band. And Selena absolutely loved this. She was very bubbly and energetic and outgoing, and just had so much zest in her. But sadly, this did not last long because the family restaurant closed down just a year later due to a recession, and the Quintanillas had to file for bankruptcy. Eventually, they moved from Lake Jackson to Corpus Christi, still in Texas, and this is when Selena really started to get more into singing and performing on stage. She loved this so much that her father actually pulled her out of school in the 8th grade so she could focus more on her music. She was homeschooled until finishing high school, and then for college, she took up business administration. And even though she knew that she was going to be a singer, Selena valued her studies very much. She was a huge advocate for education, always being heard saying that no matter what happens in her career, no one can ever take her education away from her. So aside from being a very talented singer, she was also a good example to the youth. Now in 1984, she recorded her first album and was beginning to get famous. She had a pretty solid fan base at this point, but her career skyrocketed by the late 80s when she was discovered by a guy named Jose Bejar, the president of EMI Latin Records, in 1989. Now, EMI Latin was relatively new at the time, and they were looking for the Gloria Estefan of EMI Latin, and they found Selena. She was perfect for this. She signed on to this company, and by the same year, she released her debut album, Selena. Around this time, she also started dating Chris Perez, who played the guitar for her band. However, they had to keep this relationship a secret. Selena knew that her father wouldn't really be on board with this, especially now that she was starting to make it really big in the industry. The following year, Selena released another album called Ven Conmigo, and her fan base just kept on growing and growing as she was topping the charts. This is also around the time when she met a fan, a very devout fan named Yolanda Saldivar, who started a fan club for her. Yolanda Saldivar at the time was a 30-year-old nurse from San Antonio, Texas, she watched one of Selena's shows and just fell in love. Not romantically, but you know what I mean. She just loved how talented and passionate and beautiful Selena was and became her biggest fan almost overnight. She would always be there whenever Selena had performances or fan meets or any type of public event. And eventually, she successfully made it into Selena's inner circle. Now, as I have mentioned, Yolanda was the founder and the president of Selena's fan club. But aside from this, she also had a personal relationship with Selena and the two became good friends. And as time passed by, Yolanda just kept on earning Selena's trust more and more. In 1992, Selena's father Abraham actually found out about Selena and Chris's secret relationship, resulting to him firing Chris from the band. However, Selena didn't want to let Chris go, so they eloped and got married without telling anyone. But of course, her family soon figured all of this out and eventually had no other choice but to accept Selena's decision. Chris was also accepted into the family and soon back into the band. Now, the following year, 
Selena's father, Abraham, then brought up the idea for Yolanda to manage Selena's new boutiques that she opened in 1993. Selena, etc. had two branches, one in Corpus Christi and one in San Antonio. And both of these were being managed by Yolanda Saldivar. These boutiques also had in-house hair salons and doing very well financially, but not for long. At some point, Selena, etc. actually started to lose money. Abraham would also often get complaints from employees saying that Yolanda wasn't treating them fairly and would often fire employees that would question her or get in the way of whatever it is that she was doing. Apparently, she was also not paying their insurance. Now, aside from this, members of the fan club also started to reach out to Selena and her father complaining of how they never got the merch that they paid for. And upon investigating, Abraham discovered that there was $30,000 missing and these checks have been forged by Yolanda. So on March 9, 1995, Abraham set up a meeting with Selena, her older sister Suzette, and Yolanda. They confronted Yolanda about the missing money and she completely denied everything, telling them that she had no idea what happened to the $30,000. Abraham then tells her that we know you stole the money and even threatened to call the police if she didn't return the money and present the correct bank records. However, Yolanda was firm on the fact that she did not steal anything. The Cantinias also discovered that all of the bank accounts and other money matters that involved Yolanda was actually named under her sister, but she didn't know why banks wouldn't allow her to open any accounts. And apparently, she was also keeping the fan club funds to herself. After this meeting, Yolanda grew very scared of Abraham and decided to buy a gun for her protection. She showed Selena this gun and she wasn't happy with this. Selena wasn't having it. She did not approve of Yolanda carrying around a weapon and even assured her that she would talk to her father asking Yolanda to return the gun. And even though Selena already knew that this woman was stealing from her, she just kept on giving her chances to right her wrongs. However, Yolanda never did. By March 31st, 1995, Selena has had enough. She agreed to meet up with Yolanda with the plans of firing her from being the boutique's manager. They met up in the Days Inn Hotel where Yolanda had booked a room. And at 11.45 a.m., other customers who were checked into the hotel started to complain of two women who were heard having an intense argument over money matters. And just a few minutes later, Selena sprang out of the room asking for help. Yolanda was also seen by a number of witnesses saying that she attempted to run after Selena. And they heard her saying, bitch, before running the other way, going back to her hotel room to get her stuff before proceeding to get inside her car in an attempt to make a run for it. Selena, on the other hand, ran all the way to the hotel lobby asking for help. She was gripping her shoulder and was bleeding a lot. She had been shot twice at the back. Hotel staff called for emergency services right away and within two minutes help arrived for Selena who at this point was already unconscious. However, before she even lost consciousness, she was able to name Yolanda as her attacker. And as I have mentioned, Yolanda did try to make a run for it. However, before she could even leave the parking lot, her vehicle was blocked and surrounded by police cars. They then had a 10-hour standoff where Yolanda actually had the gun to her head. But after 10 hours of trying to negotiate things, Yolanda finally grew tired and surrendered herself to the police. And this is when they told her that Selena did not make it. Selena Quintanilla was brought to the hospital and was pronounced dead on arrival. She was only 23 years old. On October 11th, the trials began. Yolanda pleaded not guilty, saying that it was all an accident and that she was actually trying to commit suicide. She also denied the fact that Selena was trying to fire her from her job that day. 
Yolanda claims that she was actually trying to quit and that Selena was begging her to stay. And according to her, she had the gun against her head and she was telling and motioning for Selena to leave. And this is when she accidentally pulled the trigger. However, to be able to pull this trigger, one would have to put at least 11 pounds of pressure on it. So this was obviously not an accident. On October 23rd, 1995, Yolanda Saldivar was found guilty of the first-degree murder of Selena Quintanilla. She was given the sentence of life in prison with the possibility of parole in 30 years. Her parole meeting will be on 2025. She is now 62 years old and have been serving time for 27 years. And that is all that I have for you guys for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in and I will see you guys tomorrow.